quality six. What do you mean when you say mm -hmm. divine truth will never and can never accommodate itself to the beliefs of men? Well, this quality of divine truth is obviously linked to some other qualities we've already discussed, and that is that divine truth is immovable. It has a, you know, this characteristic that you can't change it, that, it, that it's infinite in its nature and those kind yeah. of qualities. And so the, the, this, now, this qual particular quality, though, defines a relationship, if you like, between divine truth and mankind. Mm. Humankind constantly desires this... Um, but particularly, again, not with physical things, but with emotional and spiritual matters, desires that they can have hold, hold on to their own truths. Yeah. They believe that they can be um, and believe things from a spiritual and emotional perspective, that, that they have the right to do so, in fact, which, of course, they have been given the will to do so, mm. but not necessarily the right to do so. Because it, because the right implies the an angry, uh, um, an angry holding on to false beliefs and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, God, all of God's laws are created to encourage us to shift from that perspective. But the majority of people on earth believe that they should be able to hold on to their own truth and have a relationship with God at the same time. So you see people in all sorts of different religious formats thinking that their particular belief is the belief of that, that is the true belief about God. Uh -huh. They believe, so if you ask a Christian what's the true belief about God, he'll quote the Bible, this and the Bible, that, and mention all of these things. If you ask a Muslim what the true belief about God is, he'll quote the Koran, this, and, and have, have... If you ask a Hindu what the true belief is about God, he'll quote all different things. If you ask a Buddhist, he'll mm -hmm. quote different things again. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because mankind has made up all of their own ideas about God. Mm -hmm. They've made up all of their own ideas about what divine truth is. They've made up all of their ideas about what is absolute truth. Now, God's truth doesn't conform to the ideas of men. That's one of its qualities. Yes. So just because you've made up an idea or concept about God, it doesn't mean that that's the truth about God. It just means it's your idea or concept about God. And sooner or later, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact that it's your idea or concept and it's not necessarily God's truth mm. about God or about the universe or about the human soul, or about science, or about mathematics, or about any subject, in fact. What, what we need to come to terms with is that just because we have a personal idea, it means nothing in reality to what is God's truth mm -hmm. about any issue. Whether the issue be physical, emotional, spiritual, in nature, it doesn't matter. Soul-based, it doesn't matter. Whatever our ideas are, they will probably have to change if we are going to accept God's truth on a certain matter. Yeah. God's truth will not conform to men's ideas or women's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of women on the planet I know today seem to have an idea that they have a better idea <laughs> about what is love and truth than men do. Yeah. But the reality is God's truth doesn't conform to humankind's ideas of what that truth is. It is God's truth is what it is. Mm -hmm. It is the reality of the universe. We are the persons who are going to have to discover it at some point if we wish to be happier. And we are going to have to change our concepts. And we're going to be forced into that position through time, through this time process. Yeah. We will eventually come to recognise that what, what's the point of constructing all of these man-made concepts when some of them or none of them may represent God's truth. Mm. Isn't it better to have a scientific process of investigating what God's truths actually are and then bring our lives into harmony with them? Yeah. That would be a better course of action. Mm. But instead of doing that, what mankind has done is they've created a lot of their personal ideas, put them in books and then said, that's how God is. <laughs> and of course, we have whole billions of people practising their lives around these things now and, and unfortunately, many of them are desperately unhappy because they're not God's truths. Mm. And that's, a, that's the problem we face. So just um, to finish off this point, something you've got in the notes here is that men who want to hold on to personal truth, truth do not really love God or understand God. 
Correct. Could you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, about, talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the, the, we don't understand, like, I find this happening a lot with religious people. They come up with a lot of concepts about God, which are not godlike at all. They're not even loving at all, most of them. They're not truth. They're not divine truth. But they are their own personal opinion. And then what they do is they think that that means they have a relationship with God. Mm. They think that that means that it makes them holy. And it doesn't. The only holiness that can ever result in a person is when love enters their soul from God. Yeah. And the only truth or knowledge, real knowledge, that can ever enter a person must come from God, from God's understanding of the universe. When you construct your own ideas and then believe you're holy as a result of them, you don't love God at all. You love yourself. That's all you love. Mm. And I would and suggest you don't even love that very well, <laughs> because if you truly loved yourself, you'd want to know God's opinion rather than your own. Yeah. <laughs> don't we just love the construction, what we've created, the sense yes. of it's pride a, we have? The exactly. Sense, yeah. It's a terrible condition of arrogance. Mm. Basically, what we're doing is we're saying to the world that God conforms to our concept of what God is. That's what we're saying to the world. We're saying that God should conform to our concept of what God is. Mm. And we're actually telling the world that they also have to conform to our concept of what God is. And when we do that without any relationship with God, we are arrogant. And yet many people in this condition believe they're holy. Mm. They believe that they are, have a relationship with God and they believe they're doing the right thing. But all they're doing is supporting their own arrogance. That's all they're doing. So we need to see that this is the case, that God's truth in this regard, the quality of God's truth, is never going to conform itself to mankind's ideas. And whenever I construct an idea that I expect my brothers and sisters on the planet to conform to, and I expect God to conform to, it is a display of my own arrogance. Yeah. That's all it is. <laughs>